Storage Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. We're here at Dell Storage Forum 2012 in Paris, France, talking to uh, various uh, Dell executives and customers about how they're using Dell Storage. Uh, joining me right now is Bob Fine, Director of Product Marketing for the Compellent Line. How you doing, Bob? Doing well, George. It's always, always good to see you. Great. Good to be here. Uh, another city, another place, right? Yep, feels good. So I think at the show you guys have got a couple of big announcements going on. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, we've got some great announcements that we're very excited about. Uh, the first part of our announcement is we have a new version of our main Storage Center code that we call Storage Center version 6.3. Some great performance capabilities, hopefully we can talk a little bit more, but both in terms of fiber channel performance as well as the performance in the controller, we've made some huge improvements in the code and uh, we'd like to talk about some of those today. Okay, well let's, uh, let's, let's uh, knock out the 16 gig fiber. I think you guys are the first uh, in this area, right? Uh, so we are first. Uh, what's important about the 16 gig fiber channel, it really takes uh, a number of components to make it work together. It's not just the array controller. But what we're announcing is an end-to-end 16-gig fiber channel from the server through the switch infrastructure and to the storage itself. So it's more than just Compellent and it's more than just Dell. We also have some great partnerships for the switch infrastructure. Uh, some of those partnerships are uh, here at the show. And also through our HBA partnerships as well. Okay, great. And so that, that gives us uh, obviously really high performance, but I think what is, is most interesting is what you guys have done from a software code standpoint. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? So performance in the fiber channel bandwidth is great, uh, but we think there's two parts to it. It's not, just in ha not enough just to have maximum performance from server to the controller, but we also really wanted to make some dramatic improvements in the controller itself. So as part of this show with Storage Center 6.3, through software only, we're announcing some great performance improvements specifically. With 6.3, our customers can get up to a 100% software improvement in the overall uh, performance from the back end with this code load, all in software. So that, that's really separate from the whole 16 gig announcement, right? That means if I'm a mm -hmm. regular compellent uh, customer that I'm maybe a little uh, performance constrained, uh, if that, uh, I, I, may, I may see a performance upgrade even in that environment? So a lot of our customers will see a dramatic performance gain, uh, particularly those with the 8000, our latest controller. And um, it, it's been pretty evolutionary what we've done over the last year. Okay. Starting in January at the Dell Storage Forum, we made the first transition as we we're part of Dell. We moved from a 32-bit operating system to a 64-bit. Mm -hmm. So that was in January. Then in June, we made the next big move onto Dell hardware by moving onto a Dell controller. Okay. So we're leveraging 12 generations of Dell server technology because now we can leverage the Dell server as our controller. Mm -hmm. So we made that move in June, and then in September, we continued that evolutionary uh, progression as we announced Dell disk enclosures. So we had all that great hardware and software in place. Mm -hmm. And then the next step was to make some improvements in the software. Because okay. really what we saw happening in the market is that a lot more customers are moving towards a flash-based architecture. Mm -hmm. They came to us and said, and, and, and as we saw that adoption, they said, you know, we'd really like more and more performance, particularly in writes. Uh, Compellent, what can you do to help optimize the code? Mm -hmm. So we looked at the code from end to end, both our, our drivers, our page allocation, our I.O. stacks, and really optimized it for write operations. And it's not one single thing that we did. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of small things in aggregate that add up to these very dramatic performance gains. So, so really you're getting into the, the code on the controller itself that, that you're getting a lot of this optimization from. Absolutely. Uh, like I said, we looked at all different aspects. How do we give our customers the best possible write performance? And by giving them those kind of improvements that we've talked about, up to 100% gains, this will help across the board and a variety of typical workloads, uh, virtual desktop. We've uh, made measurements for Exchange as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, write performance is dramatically improved, and at the same time, latency drops way down. You know, that's really interesting. I, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think here, but you're probably, if, if not the first, one of the first vendors that have, has really gone back and tweaked, you know, let's call it core code for an evolving 
uh, storage infrastructure, right? We've got we've got disks that don't rotate anymore. We've got uh, right. all this. You got 16 gig fiber, and I, and I've been saying for a while, hey, the controller and the software that runs on that controller is going to start to become an issue if they don't start tuning right. it. And really, I think you're really the first guys that I that I've seen that said, hey, let's get in there and and, and work on this. Um, we think we are. Uh, it's always been a key part of the compellent value proposition to help our customers have the lowest TCO. George, you've talked to lots of vendors. Every vendor says it. Mm -hmm. How many vendors can really execute on that strategy? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the compellent model has always been to provide a modular set of components. So customers can start out with uh, our third, fourth, fifth generation controller, and then add modules around it as they grow. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and as technology changes, they only have to replace certain modules, but not the whole thing. So now in the case of this release, um, customers have those modules in place. They don't want to buy a new platform. They don't want to rip and replace it. And typically what happens when they do that, there's an outage, and sure. they've got to rebuy the software licenses. We see that from other vendors. Right, yeah, there's news this week uh, even where we've seen some upgrades that, and that those are going to require a new generation of systems, right? Um, we have heard of other vendors that recently made announcements. Um, but in order for the customer to take advantage of that new model, They've got to take the old one out. Right. Of course, there's an outage. Then there's data migration, more time, more right. money. Um, and then there's software cost. So what we did at uh, Compellent was really radically different. Took what customers have in their system. And now, as long as they have a valid support contract in place, this is a zero-cost software upgrade and no downtime, no disruption. As long as they have the kind of back-end disks that are required to give the necessary IOPS for the controller, they'll see a dramatic performance gain with Storage Center 6.3. So that would probably be anybody with a, 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 mm -hmm. either a lot of disks or some disk and flash should see some sort of a, a performance gain. Absolutely. And when we say a lot, it doesn't, um, you know, we're not talking um, many, many hundreds. Um, but if a customer maybe has one shelf of drives, mm -hmm. then there's just not enough uh, IOPS coming from the disks, sure. a spinning disk. Uh, where they see a big change in uh, in this particular right. controller. But the guys that are having performance issues, probably, there's probably a, a line there that says, okay, you, you also have a lot of disks, right? So Absolutely. A, there, there's yeah. a real good correlation there. Pretty much all those customers across the board uh, for a variety of apps, um, uh, virtual desktop, uh, I mentioned some of the typical workload, exchange, great improvement, not only just overall performance, but it's the latency. Right. Uh, really where we optimize the stack was for right performance. Okay. Uh, particularly, um, even as we use uh, SSDs, of course, uh, uh, reads are a little bit different, but we really wanted to optimize those writes mm -hmm. for flash, uh, for 15K. And the beauty of a, a compelling architecture, of course, is any of that inactive data will migrate to a tier three. So the writes come in at full speed, mm -hmm. and then when they have to do a reads for that inactive data, we'll move that down to a cheaper tier of storage. So again, more performance, at a lower cost. Right. Well, and, and you know, I think you talk about the VDI mm -hmm. use case. I think people are surprised at, at the level of write workload in a VDI uh, installation. So I think that's really good for there. Yeah, it can be pretty high. Um, but uh, getting some of those latency down, uh, those numbers down were key. And our engineers and the team really worked together, listened to a lot of customers, a lot of partners, M made some great improvements. So we get a performance upgrade, mm -hmm. uh, no immediate hardware replacement required. Right. Um, and you know, basically, it's just a, a software code load from you guys, right? Correct. And that's on the uh, performance side. And we also added some other features to help our customers for a variety of other applications. We made some improvements in our synchronous replication. We added checkpointing. It's a common problem with sync replication. If that link goes down, now the two sites are out of sync. And right. what do you do? And it can be real expensive to start them back up. So we added a checkpoint capability that if that link were to drop partway through, we know where the link went down, we'll mm -hmm. journal all the writes, and then we'll um, continue to write those when the remote side comes online. Uh, some other capabilities in the release, including IPv6, uh, full support for uh, Windows uh, 2012, mm -hmm. uh, some other capabilities there. Um, and um, just just some really nice improvements across the board. So pretty for a dot release, pretty big, uh, pretty big stuff there. Pretty huh? big. So performance and enterprise capabilities. We think our customers will uh, really like it. And again, it's uh, no cost. Um, They'll like that part a lot. Yeah, no right. disruption. Which, right. Which probably I don't know if uh, you talk about this in other uh, videos that you do or some of the other work that you do, but you know maybe it's not the cost of the software release itself that's the biggest 
real cost. What's the cost of an outage? Right. And the migration time, that's, that's highly disruptive. Oh, yeah, the cost of switch. And then the risk involved with switching, too, right? Yeah. You got to move all that data. Anytime yeah. you got to move data, generally, either something bad can happen, right? Right, so. right. Well, Bob, thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. Thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for future videos from Paris, France.